What's going on, everybody? This is Lag on Lock here, and welcome back to some more Ole Miss football here on NCAA 07 for the PSP. We are in week eight, and we have a tough opponent to face this week. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and take a look at the ESPN magazine for this week. Oklahoma claims bragging rights after a 31 7 win. So as you can see guys, Oklahoma blew out Texas 31-7 in the Red River Shootout. Texas never had a chance, they only scored 7 points in the third quarter. The players of the game, we have Sawchuck from Oklahoma. He had 21 carries for 113 yards, 1 rushing touchdown, 3 receptions for 72 yards, and 1 receiving touchdown. For Texas, they have Watts who had 3 tackles and an interception. The Sooners move on to 4-1 as the Texas Longhorns fall to 4-2. So guys, in the last video, we lost our first conference game of the season to the Vanderbilt Commodores. I hate saying that. We lost 52 to 28. The players of the game, we have Wade, who had four receptions for 221 yards and three touchdowns. For Vanderbilt, they had Griffin, who had seven carries for 156 yards, two touchdowns, three receptions for 36 yards. Hopefully next year we can play versus them again because I promise you this will not happen again. We will not lose by 24 points to this Vanderbilt team. Now we're going to take a look at the end season recruiting board and Sean Cooley, he has yet to decide who he wants to play for. Good thing we didn't go down after that loss to Vanderbilt. He said that he had a great time on his visit. I guess he went to go visit Florida State or Miami. We're definitely in the mix, so we can keep this up. If we win versus Alabama this week, I'm pretty sure he's going to sign with Ole Miss. So now we're going to take a look at the top 25 polls here. And at number one, we have the Tennessee Volunteers who beat Georgia 32-27. At number two, we have the Michigan Wolverines who beat Michigan State 31-21. At number three, we have the Ohio State Buckeyes who beat Bowling Green 29-6. At number four, we have the Miami Hurricanes who beat the Tar Heels 28-27. That was a close game. At number five, we have the Alabama Crimson Tide who beat Duke 30-14. At number six, we have the Oklahoma Sooners who beat Texas 31-7. At number seven, we have the Hoagies. They had a bye week. At number eight, we have UCLA who beat Arizona 25-24. At number nine, we have the Purdue Boilermakers who defeated Iowa 34-17. At number 10, we have the USC Trojans who beat Washington 28-24. At number 11, we have the Texas Longhorns who beat Oklahoma 31-7. At number 12, we have the Texas A&M Aggies who lost their first game of the season to Kansas, losing 17-14 in an upset. At number 13, we have the Florida Gators who beat LSU 17-14. At number 14, we have the Oregon State Beavers who beat Washington State 10-3. At number 15, we have the LSU Tigers who lost to Florida 17-14. At number 16, we have the North Carolina Tar Heels who lost to Miami 28-27. At number 17, we have the South Carolina Gamecocks. They lost their first game of the season to the University of Kentucky losing 13-7. At number 18, we have the Iowa Hawkeyes, who lost to Purdue 34-17. At number 19, we have the Georgia Bulldogs, who lost to Tennessee 32-27. At number 20, we have the Arizona State Sun Devils. They had a bye week. At number 21, we have the BYU Cougars, who are now ranked after defeating San Diego State 24-17. At number 22, we have the Kentucky Wildcats. They are now ranked after defeating South Carolina 13-7. At number 23, we have the Cavaliers who lost to ECU 22-7 in an upset. At number 24, we have the Oklahoma State Cowboys. They lost to Kansas State 24-3 in an upset. And last, we have the Oregon Ducks who are now ranked after defeating Cal 27-14. Looking at the others receiving votes, we have Pitt, Michigan State, Florida State, Stanford, North Carolina State, and Kansas State. And the only teams that were dropped out was number 13, Pitt, number 25, Michigan State, and number 23, Louisville. So guys, we are in week eight, so I wanna give you guys a quick update on my team information. We are currently four and two. We are two and one in conference play. In terms of our injured players, we have Dart, our quarterback, who's out for two weeks. Battle, our cornerback, who's out for 11 weeks. He did get hurt last week as we faced Vanderbilt. And we have Davis, our wide receiver, who's out for six weeks. So like I said, we are heading to Alabama to take on the Crimson Tide. In terms of our offensive leaders, we have Altmaier, who has 55 completions out of 100 attempts for 1,585 yards, 17 touchdowns. That is great. That is amazing to look at for a back up quarterback and he's only thrown two interceptions rushing we have evans who has 81 attempts for 465 yards he's averaging five yards per carry he has four rushing touchdowns and he's averaging 77 yards per game 
Receiving, we have Wade, our top wide receiver. He has 18 receptions for 625 yards. He's averaging 34 yards per catch. He has six touchdowns so far this year, and he's averaging 104 yards per game. Looking at our defense, we have Robinson, who's leading in tackles with 19. He's also leading in sacks with three. And then for interceptions, we have Coleman with two. So now, guys, we're going to take a look at the top five Heisman Trophy candidates. And at number one, we have number one, Gibbs, the junior halfback out of Alabama. He has 140 carries for 660 yards, 10 receptions for 196 yards, and 13 total touchdowns. He's having a fantastic year so far. At the number two spot, we have number six, HN, the junior halfback out of Texas A&M. At the number three spot, we have number five, Hooker, the senior redshirt quarterback out of Tennessee. Taking the number four spot is number 24, Malachi Thomas, the sophomore halfback out of Virginia Tech. And last, we have number 32, Henderson, the sophomore halfback out of Ohio State. So guys, this week we are facing the toughest team on our schedule, the Alabama Crimson Tide, who are currently 6-0. 3-0 in conference play. They're ranked number five in the nation. When it comes to their injured players, they have Burton, their wide receiver. He's out for the season. In their last game, they defeated Duke 30-14. Looking at their offensive leaders, they have Bryce Young, who has 88 completions out of 128 attempts. He has 1,189 yards, 12 touchdowns, and three interceptions. Rushing, they have Gibbs, the Heisman leader, who has 140 attempts for 660 yards. He's averaging 4 yards per carry. He has 11 touchdowns, and he's averaging 110 yards per game. Receiving, they have Harrell, who has 17 receptions for 226 yards. He's averaging 13 yards per catch. He has 3 receiving touchdowns, and he's averaging 37 yards per game. Looking at their defense, they have Anderson, who's leading in tackles with 26. Tuato, I think that's how you pronounce his name. He's leading in sacks with three. And then for interceptions, they have Helm, who has three interceptions. So that's going to do it for the team information for the Alabama Crimson Tide. I'll see you guys out there on the field. So here we are guys out in Tuscaloosa, Alabama as we take on the undefeated Crimson Tide. Now they are currently ranked number 5 in the nation so we do have our work cut out for us. It's going to be first and 10 as Bryce Young throws it to Williams. He's going to do a quick spin move and he gets a gain of about 3 to start this game off. Man, I hope you guys are just as excited about this game as I am. We already defeated Georgia. Now we have to face Alabama, one of the toughest teams in the SEC. It's going to be second and seven. Direct snap to McLennan. He's going to run to the left, and he's tackled a gain of about three on that play. It's going to be third and four. But our real challenge today is stopping Gibbs. He's number one on the Heisman watch. Bryce Young steps back, looking. Fires this one downfield, and this one is going to sail out of bounds. They're going to go three and out. First and 10 for Ole Miss as we start our first possession. Altmaier hands it off to Evans. He has clear space, first down and more, and he's finally tackled out of bounds. Great run for Evans to start this game. Altmaier hands it off to Evans on a counter play. He's going to run to the right, hurdles, and that's going to be another first down for Ole Miss. We're now spot at the 28-yard line. Altmaier hands it off to Evans, and he gets a gain of about two on that play. This looks to be Zach's Evans' game because last week when we played versus Vanderbilt, he only had 35 yards. As we hand it off to Watkins, he's stuck at the line of scrimmage trying to move forward, and he's finally brought down. No gain on that play. It's going to be third and eight. And on third and eight, Altmaier steps back, looking, trying to find a man open. Throws it downfield to Mingo, who makes the one-handed catch, and that's going to be another first down for Ole Miss. Mingo is currently averaging 40 yards per game and 20 yards per catch. Altmaier steps back, rolls to the left, and he's going to take this one for himself, tries to spin, 
but he gets a gain of about five on that play. It's going to be second and goal. Altmaier hands it off to Evans, and he's tackled at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be third and goal. Can we get into the end zone? Altmaier hands it off to Evans, and he gets tripped up on that play. It's going to be fourth and goal as we get set to kick this 24-yard field goal attempt. But hold up, guys. There is a flag down the field. We are going to be called for false start, but it doesn't matter. We're still within field goal range. The kick is up. And the kick is good. Great drive for Ole Miss. Nine plays, 53 yards. Now it's going to be first and 10 for Alabama. They at the 25-yard line. Young hands it off to Gibbs on his first carry. He gets the first down. A 13-yard gain for Gibbs on that play. We have to contain him or else this is going to be a long day for us. And there's a flag down the field for encroachment. We're looking at first and five now. We can't anticipate the snap count. Bryce Young steps back, looking, throws it to Leary, who makes the catch, and Brown was there to bring him down. A gain of three on that play. It's going to be second and two, with less than a minute left to go in the first quarter. Young hands it off to Gibbs, juke move, and he's brought down just a yard shy of the first down marker. It's going to be third and one. Can we get a stop here? Young hands it off to Gibbs again, juke move. And he's brought down by Young, and that's going to do it for the first quarter with the score. Alabama 0, Ole Miss 3. First and 10 now for Alabama as we start the second quarter. They're spotted on their own 49-yard line. Young hands it off to Gibbs. And Gibbs, he's tackled behind the line of scrimmage. A one-yard loss. It's going to be second and 11. Young toss play to Gibbs. He's going to run to the outside. He has the blockers. He gets the first down. Fights for extra yards. And he's heading downfield. Brown, our last line of defense, finally brings him down inside the 10-yard line. Gibbs is currently leading the NCAA in terms of touchdowns. He has 11. But hold up, guys. There is a flag down the field. It's going to be called encroachment on Ole Miss. Of half the distance to the goal, it's going to be first and goal at the three-yard line as Young hands it off to Gibbs. Juke, spin move, and he dives into the end zone for a touchdown. And there's another flag down the field. And I believe this is coming back for holding. No, it's going to be called clipping on McLennan, a 15-yard penalty. It's going to be first and goal at the 18-yard line. Major step back for Alabama. Young hands it off to Gibbs. Juke. Jukes again. No one's able to break him down. He's finally brought down at the two-yard line, back to where they started. It's going to be second and goal. I don't know what our defense was doing on that play. Young, toss play to Gibbs. And he's going to run this one into the end zone. A two-yard touchdown run for Alabama. First and goal at the 18-yard line, and we couldn't stop Gibbs. It's going to be first and 10 now for Ole Miss. We're at the 14-yard line. Altmaier steps back, rolls to the left, nearly sacked, rolls back to the right, throws it downfield to Evans, who makes the catch. And that's going to be a first down for Ole Miss, a 30-yard gain. Altmaier hands it off to Evans, spin move, and he's finally brought down by Dale. That's his second tackle for loss today. It's going to be second and 10. Altmaier hands it off to Evans. He's going to run to the outside. Huge block by number 64 as Evans runs along the sideline. And he's finally brought down out of bounds. Huge game for Zach Evans. We're now spot at the 26-yard line. Altmaier hands it off to Watkins. And he stopped immediately as soon as we hiked the ball. It's going to be second and 12, a two-yard loss. Altmaier steps back, rolls to the left, and he's going to take this one for himself, and he stopped three yards shy of the first down marker. It's going to be third and three. Wow, the crowd is really getting into it. <laughs> Altmaier hands this one off to Evans, and that's going to be a gain of one. They were able to stop us on our third down conversion. We're doing pretty well, though. We're keeping up with Alabama. Now we're going to get set to kick this 35-yard field goal attempt. The kick is up, and the kick is good. That's Jonathan Cruz's second field goal of the day. First and 10 now for Alabama. They're at the 26-yard line. Young steps back, looking. 
Throws it to McLennan, who makes the one-handed catch, and that's going to be a first down for Alabama. With about a minute left to go, let's see if Alabama can score before halftime. Young steps back, fires this one downfield, and it's intercepted by Groves, the freshman safety. He's going to run along the sideline. Can he get a pick six? And he's finally brought down by number five. Great job for Groves for getting that pick. That puts us in pretty good field position. First and 10 now for Ole Miss. We're at the 18-yard line. Altmaier hands it off to Evans, and he's tackled immediately at the line of scrimmage by Young. That is his 10th tackle of the season. Second and 10. Altmaier tries to hand it off to Evans, but he's going to be tackled for a loss of five yards. It's going to be third and 15. Altmaier hands it off to Evans, and he's going to pick up one yard on that play. I didn't want to throw it because I didn't want to force the interception. As we get set to kick this 39-yard field goal attempt, the kick is up, and the kick is good. Great drive for Ole Miss. Well, we had negative four yards, but hey, we were able to score. As we head into the locker room with the score, Ole Miss 9, Alabama 7. First and 10 now for Ole Miss as we start the second half of play. We're doing pretty well today moving downfield, but we haven't scored yet. I mean, at least we're putting points up on the board with field goals, so I can't complain there. It's going to be second and seven for Ole Miss. We're at the 25-yard line. Altmaier steps back, Stop right there, and he's going to get sacked on that play by Smith, his second sack of the season. Third and 14, a seven-yard loss. Altmaier looking. Throws it downfield to Wade, who makes the catch. And that's going to be a first down for Ole Miss. I'm surprised Wade isn't an impact player. He's been clutched this whole season. It's going to be first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Altmaier steps back, looking. Throws it to Knox, who makes the catch. Okay, that was a... I thought it was going to hit the turf, but he was able to complete that pass. It's going to be second and one. Altmaier hands it off to Watkins, trying to fight for it. Runs to the outside. And he's tackled behind the line of scrimmage. A one-yard loss is going to be third and two. We're currently two of five on third down conversions. Altmaier hands it off to Evans. And he gets the first down on that play. That is our seventh first down of the game. Altmaier hands it off to Evans. He has the blockers. He's heading up field. He gets the first down. He's tackled out of bounds. So far, Zach Evans has 13 rushes for 98 yards. Can't ask for a better running back. Altmaier, play action. Throws it downfield to Trigg, and that's going to be an incomplete pass. That would have been a touchdown right there if he caught it. Second and 10. Altmaier hands it off to Evans. I did see that hole there after watching this video. I don't know why I ran to the outside as Evans picks up seven yards. Third and three. Altmaier hands it off to Watkins, and that's going to be a first down on the fullback dive. First and goal now. We're at the eight-yard line. Ten plays, 70 yards for Ole Miss on this drive. Altmaier steps back, throws across the middle. Domingo who makes the catch, and that's going to be a touchdown for Ole Miss. An eight-yard touchdown pass. And just like that, we score our first touchdown of the game. First and 10 now for Alabama. They are down by two possessions. Young hands it off to Gibbs. He has the blockers. He's heading downfield. We're struggling to bring him down. And he's finally brought down at the 39-yard line. Huge game for Gibbs on that play. Man, this guy Gibbs is a good running back. No wonder he's number one on the Heisman watch. Young hands it off to Gibbs. He's going to run to the outside. And Washington was there to bring him down just an inch shy of the first down. The 
Young hands off to McLennan this time, and he gets the first down. A gain of three for Alabama. It's going to be first and ten at the 26-yard line. Young hands off to McLennan again. Juke move. He's going to cut back to the inside, and Ivy was there to bring him down. A one-yard gain. Less than a minute left to go in the third quarter. Young hands it off to Gibbs. Gibbs, juke move, jukes again. And can someone bring this guy down? Man, this guy's like a tank. And that's going to be another first down for Alabama. They're at the 11-yard line. Young drops back. Looking. Fires it to Williams, who makes the catch. And that's going to be a touchdown for Alabama. I was so worried about Gibbs that I forgot they had Bryce Young. Altmaier hands this one off to Evans, and he goes nowhere on that play. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter with the score. Ole Miss 16, Alabama 14. Second and nine now for Ole Miss as we start the fourth quarter. There's a lot of back and forth going on between these two teams. No one's able to pull ahead. As we hand this one off to Evans, he gets laid out on that play. It's going to be third and eight. We are currently four of seven on third down conversions. Altmaier steps back, rolls to left, throws it downfield to Wade who makes the catch, hurdles, and he takes a big hit, but he's able to hold on to it. That's going to be a first down for Ole Miss. Y'all don't understand how thankful I am that I have Wade for another year. He's been a crucial part of this offense. Altmaier throws it downfield to Trigg, and that's going to be an incomplete pass. Nearly intercepted. We're looking at second and ten. Altmaier hands this one off to Watkins, and he takes a big hit on that play. A four-yard gain. We're looking at third and six. Altmaier hands this one off to Evans, and he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage. And so far, Alabama's rush defense, they allow 43 yards on average, but today we're, we're rushing for 111 yards, so we're doing pretty well against this uh, rush defense. Young, toss play to Gibbs. He's going to run to the outside, and Sis Trunk was there to bring him down. A one-yard loss. It's going to be second and 11. Young hands this one to Gibbs again. Juke move. And he's brought down a gain of six on that play. So far, Gibbs has 12 rushes for 146 yards and one touchdown. Young hands this one to Gibbs, and Ivy was there with the big hit. Laid him out like a Tempur-Pedic. They're going to go three, and now it's going to be first and ten for Ole Miss. Altmaier hands this one to Evans, and he gets a gain of about two on that play as Alabama used their first timeout. Altmaier hands it to Evans. He takes a big hit on that play. Alabama's going to use their second timeout. We are currently 5 of 9 on third down conversions. Can we convert here? Altmaier rolls to the right, looking. Throws it downfield to Mingo, who makes the catch, and that's going to be a first down for Ole Miss. Just what we needed. And it's only a minute and 37 seconds left to go in this game. All we have to do now is run out the clock. Altmaier hands it to Evans, and he's going to run upfield, and that's going to be a gain of four on that play. It's going to be second and six as Alabama used their last timeout. Altmaier hands this one off to Evans. He's going to run to the outside. He has the first down and more, and he's finally brought down, and that pretty much is going to do it for this ball game, guys. Zach Evans, 21 rushes, averaging six yards per carry. And that's going to do it as we defeat the number five Alabama Crimson Tide 16-14 on the road. This is our second win against a top 25 school. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the player of the game. We have number 41, Jonathan Cruz, the senior redshirt kicker. He made three field goals as long as being a 40-yard field goal, and he made one extra point. Man, what a game, what a game. This makes up for our loss last week against Vanderbilt. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this one. Let's go ahead and take a look at the game stats. So that's going to do it for the ball game, guys. We defeated the number five Alabama Crimson Tide 16-14 on the road. We had 12 first downs. Alabama had eight. Total offense, we had 285. Bama had 185. On the ground, we had 32 rushes for 148 yards. 
Bama had 16 rushes for 152 yards. Through the air, we had seven completions out of nine attempts and scored one touchdown. Alabama had four completions out of six attempts and scored one touchdown as well. We had 137 passing yards, Bama had 33. We were sacked once in this game. We were six of 10 on third down conversions, Alabama was one of three. We were in the red zone five times, scoring one touchdown and making three field goals. Alabama, they were in the red zone two times and scored twice. Alabama had one turnover in this game, and it was an interception. Total yards, we had 357, Alabama had 235. In time of possession, we had 1234, Alabama had 726. Looking at individual stats, Luke Altmaier had a 242 QB rating. He had seven completions out of nine attempts for 137 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions, and a 77 completion percentage. Zach Evans had 140 yards on the ground today, averaging six yards per carry. Mingo had three receptions for 43 yards. Dayton Wade had two receptions for 55. Jalen Knox had one reception for nine. And Zach Evans had one reception for 30 yards. Jonathan Mingo was the only player to score a touchdown today. Defensively, Ivy, Brown, and Sis Trunk led our team in tackles with three. Ivy, Robinson, and Sis Trunk had a tackle for loss. Taylor Groves, the freshman free safety, got a pick. And Jonathan Cruz made three field goals today out of three attempts, going 100%. His longest kick was a 40-yard field goal. Now we're going to take a look at the NCAA Players of the Week for Week 8. On offense, we have number one Montgomery, the senior redshirt halfback out of Rice, as they defeated UAB 28-21. He had 42 carries for 166 yards, three rushing touchdowns, 47 receiving yards, and one receiving touchdown. Defensively, we have number 36 Nardun, the sophomore right outside linebacker from Miami University, as they defeated Buffalo 34-30. He had six tackles, two of those tackles being for loss, a forced fumble, and a touchdown. Moving over to the SEC Players of the Week for Week 8. On offense, we have number 5 Sanders, a sophomore halfback out of Arkansas, as they defeated Southeast Missouri 37-7. He had 38 carries for 265 yards and two rushing touchdowns. Defensively, we have number six Davis, the senior redshirt right in out of Mississippi State, as they defeated Jacksonville State 26-7. He had 12 tackles, six of those tackles being for loss, three sacks, and a fumble recovery. So guys, in the next video, we'll be heading out to Arkansas to take on the Razorbacks, who are currently 4-2. They have an A- overall, a B offense, and a B plus defense. They are also ranked number two in the nation when it comes to rush offense, so it should be a great game. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this one. If you like what you see and you would like to see more, please like, comment, and subscribe down in the comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.